we were working on the 30 days of cloud campaign and um, I found it really interesting opportunity to get involved, get my school involved and uh, provide this opportunity to all my students in the campus um, to learn something new and after all, it was sponsored by Google, free credits, you get to explore anything you want, finish as much labs as you want. Um, so I was able to help in securing the first place over North America again, a 75 school for Sheridan College. Uh, individually, I completed 26 course in 30 days. And with the help of other seven students, we ranked first. And the total badges uh, reflect the number of courses completed uh, for each group, um, yeah, among those 75 schools. And that was a beginning for, this was the beginning of lots of other accomplishments I have achieved. It was kind of like the snowball effect. So during the same time I was competing for the 30 Days of Cloud campaign, I was also a Velocity student. Not sure if anyone here is familiar with Velocity program at Scotiabank. So simply, it's uh, the technical program, technical internships uh, for Scotiabank. Uh, usually they are hiring for data science, DevOps, software engineers, and I was a software engineer, right? So in the social events we had, like water cooler Fridays or any kind of recurring meeting, um, I would bring up the competition. I would bring up the opportunity for any students to, to be involved, not just the clubs uh, that are registered with Google, but any other student, even if you don't have a club, you can enter this competition. Uh, the impact was great, and it helped uh, me getting the AOO award, which uh, represents attitude, ownership, and opportunity. Uh, so from a cohort of 80 students, I was selected among the top four. That also reflected on my achievements at Sheridan College. So I was selected to be the co-op student of the year among all the programs in computing because of the impact of the club, because how students started to get encouraged learning something new in the middle of the pandemic where schools were closed and unfortunately not everyone got uh, their opportunity in internships. And as a result of this, I was also um, nominated as the National and Provisional Co-op Students of the Year, where I got an honorable mention um, on a nation level. So I'm just sharing those certificates or those awards now to give um, an idea about, as a student, you have a lot to do. Uh, if you are a student and you feel like, oh, there's uh, lots, lots of students like me, how can I stand out? How can I make a difference? Um, get engaged in your union, get engaged with any, any computing related club. If you don't have one in your campus, start one. Uh, there is lots of opportunity for st students out there, especially now, um, so make sure to use it. Um, when I was uh, getting all of these awards and recognition, uh, I was interviewing with the MLOps team at Scotiabank. And of course, I'm not coming from ML related background. I just know object-oriented programming, C, C sharp, um, data structures. So I didn't know what, what would be the questions in the interview, but I got an interview anyway. And it was a casual chat, to be honest. It wasn't really a technical deep, um, deep conversation. I remember the hiring manager, who is now my director, um, started talking about Scotiabank migration and uh, how I'm expected to work in GCP and if this is something I will be looking forward to. So I started to brag about my first place. I told him about the competition and I told him, yes, I don't have an ML related background, but I'm keen to learn. And um, it was an internship, so the opportunity is a lot easier than full-time role for, for sure. Um, I got in and I started to look into how can I take those courses and badges to the next level. Um, okay, I'm collecting courses, badges. 
looks good on my cloud skill boost profile, but how can I prove to my employer that I have passed an exam, which is a different story. Um, so I started studying for my exams and I passed it um, last year in October. Um, it was for the professional cloud architect certificate. If anyone is interested, feel free to reach out to me. I can help you in your preparation. Uh, again, I used the opportunity of unlimited access as uh, Google Developer Group's uh, co-organizer, I was able to get lots of access, uh, Cloud Skill Boost. Also, I did host multiple study jams last year for my group in Mississauga, and I was able to give credits to um, users attending, attending those sessions to learn Google Cloud. So I passed the Google Cloud um, Architect Certificate, um, and now I'm focusing on how can I land my full-time role. I'm with my team, student, um, trying to do my best to prove that I learn fast, I can pick up things really quickly. And six weeks on my internships, I started hearing conversations with, from my director in the stand-up meeting, we are looking for full-timers, if you know someone, if you know someone. And my internships was, I was approved twice by the team. I was interviewed with two different hiring managers within the same team, one for winter, one for summer. I got them both. So I was saying to myself, okay, I'm, I'm already staying with them for eight months. There is, I haven't done anything um, to, to convince them to hire me full-time, right? I, I don't know ML yet. Um, however, again, because I love to use every opportunity because I have nothing to lose, I just spoke with my manager. He was a senior manager on the team. And I told him, I know I'm still early. I didn't prove much during my six weeks. And I'm just wondering when is the best time to be vocal that I like what I'm working on. And he came the next day and he said, we can offer you a full-time position. Um, yeah, I was impressed. <laughs> um, three, two months later, I get my first access in our environment at Scotiabank as an MLOps professional or uh, analytics DevOps engineer, to be exact with, with the HR uh, title. So in this section, I will go over my steps in helping myself Filling these gaps, like between software engineering background to ML and data science or analytics. Uh, what is MLOps? If you are not familiar with the MLOps term, it's machine learning operations. Um, so this is just um, a workflow for, uh, for an automated CI-CD pipeline. Uh, you can see the data part is only step four, if you, if you can see it clearly. Um, so the data part from extraction, validation, preparation, model training, model validation, model evaluation, this is only one step from six different steps. So MLOps is, is a lot more than um, just training a model or deploying a model, it's, it's a lot more. Um, and I get very, this question very often, what is the difference between DevOps and MLOps? Uh, DevOps is mostly uh, concerned about deploying applications, right? Software or application. Uh, however, MLOps is concerned about the data part, right? That your goal is to deploy your trained model in production, not a software application. Uh, those are very high level points, uh, comparison between the scope, the workflow, what kind of tools. So when it comes to tools, in DevOps you use Git or Jenkins or, or Docker. Um, in MLOps, you use those beside the model, uh, the machine learning model development and training and deployments aspect. So if, you're in, if you are good in DevOps, it's, it's easy to be good in MLOps. And uh, the second step I took forward um, was filling the gap I have by applying for a master's program that's focused on data science. So again, I was a mom of three little children. <laughs> I wanted something 100% remote. Uh, something is flexible to be uh, completed while I work full time, care for my family, 
and I don't know, need to go to the campus, right? So I applied for the online master's degree at University of Illinois. It's 100% uh, remote, delivered over Coursera. And uh, I started last year, just after graduating from Sheridan College, and now I'm halfway. My master's should be completing it this year, next year. Uh, reflecting on the journey, um, I'm not the only one who did this. Just to let you know, um, not everyone would be comfortable coming on the stage to tell their story, but I definitely had classmates, mothers coming from different backgrounds, going to school while taking care of their families without any extended support. So just to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one. There, there are lots of them. Um, also, I wouldn't be able to make it without the support from my professors, co-op department, hiring managers, and uh, team members, and also the Google developer uh, groups. So it's not like I'm an extraordinary person who did this and that, but um, I, I, I can recall um, writing emails at night to my professors to request accessing my exams during my kids' sleep time during the pandemic, because obviously there was no schools, no daycares. Um, so if, if I didn't, get that support from everyone who was involved in my career journey, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, for all the students out there, um, use your time wisely on campus, get connected with your union, and uh, get active with your developer community. Um, it's a very rewarding journey for sure. And uh, I like this quote very much by Steve Jobs. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. I think this is the key of why I'm having this passion towards what I'm doing and why I always want to be on the top of everything I'm working on. I really found myself passionate about what I'm doing and I wanted to excel in it. Um, this is my contact information. Feel free to connect with me. If you are a mother and looking into switching to tech, feel free to reach out. If you know a mother who is just hesitant where to start from, um, let's connect, let's connect. And I'm also organizing or co-organizing the DevFest for GDG Mississauga on November 4th. It's 100% free. And this is the code if you are looking to register. Maybe I will leave the code for a minute. <laughs> and thank you.